Hey there folks, Philip here, and this is another snippet where I'm basically just playing a recording. This one is from a conference from uh, September, uh, Flutter Firebase Festival here in Prague, F3 it was called, and I had a talk uh, that was called Flutter Med Science. I don't want to spoil it, but this is what you would see if you went to the conference, and uh, it's pretty short, and I hope you like it. So enjoy. Oh, so yeah, uh, I've been introduced. My name is Filip Hráček. Um, uh, Simon can't pronounce my last name, which is fine. Um, so uh, my name is Filip Hráček. I was at the Flutter team for a while um, and Dart team before that. And uh, But these days I'm here in Prague. Welcome to my hometown. I hope you like it. And uh, I do games and open source development. But today I want to talk about Flutter Mad Science. So what do I mean by math science in general? I think those are the things that are, you know, like the, the cliche thing where there's a math scientist and they have something very impractical, but awesome, right? And, uh, and sometimes it just so happens that that impractical thing later leads to something that's actually very practical. Uh, and so that's what I, my talk is all about. So. Wow, oh, no. Um, so, uh, my first, what, what is Flutter Med Science? My first Med Science project that I've ever encountered, I think, is by Wim Leeler, which uh, you probably don't remember. Maybe some of the, uh, you do? You do, cool, yes. Uh, props up to, yeah, Wim. And he did something that he called Perspective on Flutter. And it's this thing uh, that is, uh, I just converted to Dartpad recently, and uh, it is an app that is rotating in three. Wait, no, that's not it. That's bad. Okay, sorry. Yes, that's what I was also. Uh, so there's a bug in Dartpad, um, and I would like to report it right now, uh, where you have the ID and you don't have. Okay, so we're going to my guest. Uh, we're going to do it the the hard way. So this and this. If you don't know how to do this, by the way, this is a learning experience for you, for free. This should work. But sometimes it doesn't. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then this should work. ID equals this. Yes, 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 yes. Whew. Okay. Anyway. All right. <laughs> So this this actually is about hacking Dartpad. Um, no, uh, so this is um, uh, a fantastic piece of completely impractical but cool app that Wim did in 2018 or 17, I think. And it's just a regular, you know, counter app you, you all know and love. But it's also um, a thing that you can rotate, right? And uh, if you look at the code, it's very, it's basically just, you, uh, I don't know if you can read it, but, but there's like a transform and that transform wraps around the default app. That's it, you know, and there's a gesture um, uh, thing, gesture detector to, to do the, the thing. And it's obviously super impractical, nobody cares, <laughs> but it still works. Yeah, like, look at this. I can put it here, where, for example, here, and I can still click on stuff, you know, it's like, uh, just just crazy. Um, anyway, so you'd think, okay, so Wim spent some time doing this, and uh, sure, he learned a little bit of, about Flutter, but otherwise, he could have learned about Flutter in a probably more efficient way if he just read, you know, about transform, maybe transform something much simpler than a whole app, and that would be it, right? But no, he did this 
mad experiment and it worked. And this led to me later to like read his code and be like, oh my God, this actually works. And something connected where I was like, oh, okay, so we have, um, we have fl this Flutter thing here, uh, which I was pretty new to, where it doesn't even care if your UI is orthogonal. It, you know, it, 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 it allows you to do things like put the whole app into a rotating perspective piece. Right? So that's, that's, the, that's the first two things that this was helpful for. But then later, I think it was the same year, but uh, I used it again by knowing that this is possible. Uh, I was privileged enough to be able to tell people at Flutter Live 2018 that it is now possible to show Google Maps in apps, right? In Flutter apps, I mean. And uh, the boring way to do it, which would be my way to do it normally, uh, is to show just, you know, a screen. Like, oh, I can open a screen and it has Google Map in it, right? But instead, what I did, and I have a video of it because it was televised. Uh, hopefully, I can find it. Yeah, is, uh, is that I had this animated thing uh, with myself, and then I showed that in that animated thing, I can have Google Maps running, you know? <laughs> and uh, people liked it. Um, so, um, so that worked really well. And, uh, and again, I don't think I consciously knew that I'm reusing Wim's uh, med experiment, uh, but I, it had to click a few months before that for me to even think of this idea. All right, so but that's still kind of impractical. So let's go and look at Luca, who's here, by the way. Luca, are you? Yeah. Um, so another mad Flutter experience, uh, experiment is by Luca, and now it's not going to work again, right? No, it's, it does. Oh, perfect. So you know how we say that uh, it's all widgets in Flutter, right? So how about a Flutter app with no widgets, zero widgets? Um, is that crazy? Yes, it is. Is that awesome? I think so. Um, so you know, in normal normal people would have main void main, and then they would have run app in that and a widget, right? But no, Luca is different. <laughs> Luca doesn't want widgets and run app. So what he does is uh, this is uh, this is evil, but but this is basically he's, he says uh, rendering Flutter binding and he binds it to a painter, a normal custom painter that you could find in many apps, right? And then he says schedule binding instance dot enter visual update. That's it. And then I, I can show you the custom painter, but if you've ever done any custom painter, you know this code. This is just like canvas.draw, whatever. And that's this app. So this app literally has zero widget and it works. And again, is it practical? No. Uh, does it, you know, is anyone going to do this in their real life? No, of course not. But it can connect it, the dots for you. If you read the code and you realize, well, in one way, Flutter is it's all widgets, but in other ways, Flutter it's it's all custom painter, uh, because you you realize oh like if you if you've done some Flutter development uh, in depth, you realize that yeah you can actually do everything that you see in Flutter is a custom painter. You know it's not really, but but like in in the end it it translates to these canvas draw calls, and that's very helpful when you try to do things like, uh, I, I just recently had to do uh, like an animated text widget, right? And you could do it in many ways in Flutter, but one of the ways is to just basically use draw paragraph, canvas.drawParagraph over here, and it, it just works. And then you can, of course, with paragraph, you can measure how big it is and stuff like this. So it's all, it's all custom painter if on the on the inside, or it's all canvas calls. So again, it gives you a little bit of insight. 
And there's many other examples. I was going to go through all of them, but uh, I don't think I have the time. I, and I think I, there are some more interesting things to talk about. But it can go from things like Matt's uh, Star Wars scroll. So he made a Star Wars scroll with just a regular list view in perspective, right? So that, that was like an afternoon work. Then Miguel uh, did a Flutter 95, basically a recreation of Windows 95 uh, uh, style and everything. So you can build Windows 95 uh, apps. And then, of course, there's Simon, uh, <laughs> who's, who made... Uh, is this a PlayStation 1 game? Yeah, a 3D engine in Flutter uh, with textures that uh, you can uh, look around a map from a PlayStation 1 game, right? And then there are many others. But let's talk about me. Uh, uh, because not, not because um, I have the, the best uh, math uh, science experiment, but because I know the whole arc of it, right? So uh, I one of my first projects in Flutter uh, was called Sci-Fi UI, and I am a big fan of just futuristic user interfaces in movies and, and games. And uh, I was just thought, okay, so this Flutter thing looks interesting. I should give it a try. And I... Um, yeah, and I implemented in something like two days. I took two days and implemented this, which is basically uh, a, uh, an app that uh, looks as much as I could make it, you know, a sci-fi thing, uh, but it's still a scrollable app. And it is absolutely not practical. No, nobody, you know, took it anywhere. I didn't take it definitely anywhere. Uh, and it's it's probably not even even if you took this and made something interesting of it, I, I don't think it would really work for most people, you know, because it's too too busy. Uh, but but yeah, it exists. And uh, for five years, the only practical outcome of these two days was that okay, I learned a little bit about you know custom paint. Uh, and animations and stuff like this because it was pretty early in my uh, in my Flutter journey, uh, but otherwise nothing much, right? It was just some somewhere sitting somewhere in uh, on my uh, huge GitHub uh, page, and um, just like two or one year ago, I revisited it though and made it into something that's not yet ready, but you can see it in the partner section where I show off this this game that I call Giant Robot Game, where I'm like, because it clicked before, where I, I understood that I don't only need to be a person who likes sci-fi interfaces, but I can actually build them, then many years later, I, because it clicked before, I was able to, to do it. So even things like that can, uh, can lead to really good outcomes. All right. But let's address the two elephants in the room in terms of math science. The first one is Dash, and some of you probably know this history better than I do. But in 2009-10, uh, JavaScript sucked, and uh, but much worse than now, right? Uh, so yeah, you could say like, oh yeah, and it's 2023, and JavaScript still sucks, um, but. But it really sucked, and it was moving very slowly. It was glacial how it uh, it was uh, moving, and so some people at Google had this crazy mad experiment where they said, "Okay, you know what? We're going to keep working on JavaScript, slowly improving it and making it better, uh, but also we're going to create this new language, new programming language that will also run in the browser." And it will be faster and it will be made for actual big apps, right? So it will run faster, it will be more structured, and so on and so forth. And we will call it Dash, and uh, we'll see how it goes, right? And then it, uh, they renamed it, renamed it to Dart, and uh, it did not work. <laughs> I mean, it did work. The language did work, but uh, nobody actually added it to any browsers and for a long time, it was a failed, mad experiment that didn't lead to any anywhere. Uh, for some, for some years, Dart was this basically a, a bit 
more involved TypeScript, where it was always translated to JavaScript. And it's it's just, that was its way. But nowadays, look at us. We're all, or I think we're all uh, working in Dart, and uh, Dart has had its um, practical use for sure. But it looked very dim for a long time, and it started as something that a lot of people didn't understand, a lot of people didn't think that it's needed, and uh, actually a lot of people wanted it to fail. And then there's Sky. So that's another weird experiment, and again, maybe you know the history, but this was uh, five years later, 2014 or 15, where a few people at Chrome realized, okay, so we have been working on making the web faster for the past many, many years. And now all the, all the low-hanging fruits are gone. Like, it takes us months to make one thing 5% faster. Just one little thing in, in Chrome, right? Um, and what if we did this weird experiment where we basically rip everything out of the web that is slow? So they just like took the web, the, the platform like HTML, JavaScript, and they just took away everything that made it slow, CSS, you know, uh, and just kept it very focused on just the parts that are actually fast or that can be made fast. And again, is it is it practical? No, of course not. Like, how can you even think about removing parts of like big, huge chunks of the web just to make it faster? Like, web is made on the promise of backwards compatibility. You can't just break it. it like, it would be like someone saying in Flutter, uh, someone saying, "You know what? We found out that widgets are slow, so no more widgets." <laughs> That, that would just not work, right? So for the web, that was the same thing. It was a very mad experiment. and they But they did this. This was Adam Barth and um, Eric Seidel and later, I think, Ian Hickson. And I'm probably uh, forgetting about the other people. Uh, and they did this for two weeks. For two weeks, they were working on this mad experiment. And after two weeks, they made the whole web something like 60% faster which is crazy. Like, think about what you can do in two weeks. They made the web 60% faster. <laughs> and so uh, they were like, okay, so we, like, we have something here. It's definitely better than we expected. Uh, but yeah, maybe it's not something for the web itself because yeah, you can't just break the web. So what they did, they, they packaged it and they made this little uh, portable user interface engine and then they just gave it to people and they called it sky i think i was at the unveiling of sky on dart summit 2015 and i remember i was like what's the big deal i didn't see the point of uh rotating rectangle in uh, uh on on android uh made by flutter i'm um, done by you know dart but uh it kind of worked and now it's called flutter and again we're all here to to see that it's uh, actually pretty practical. So, yeah. Uh, so wh where, do where does this all lead? Uh, I hope that I have convinced you that it's okay if you have the inclination to do these weird, super impractical, mad experiments that you can do it and you should do it because they often, not always, but they often lead to something that is much more practical and much more useful. I know that some people are just not, you know, interested in this, and it's fine. But uh, if you are, don't uh, prevent yourself from doing these mad things that I've just shown you. And if you lead a team, if you are a manager or some something like that, uh, then I would urge you to let people know that it's okay to sometimes do mad science in Flutter or anywhere else, because these things lead to innovation. And as you know, business people, innovation means money, right? So uh, it's, just a, it's a thing. So anyway, um, thank you for uh, your attention. I, as always, be excellent to each other. Uh, we're in, in this big community, not just here, but generally, you know, be excellent to other human beings. Uh, be as mad as you can muster. 
and thank you. One other thing that I uh, I know that you, you can just I know that there's lunch and stuff, so you can just start leaving. Uh, but I bought this especially for this conference, and and I started uh, getting people to write uh, their names on it. Like you know, Majid is there, and I hope that all the speakers uh, will be listed here. And I thought it would be cool to have like a little charity. Uh, how do that, how do you say that auction? Uh, so and the way I want to do it, I don't want your money. <laughs> but uh, w the way I want to do it, you can come up to me in my booth, and you can say you can see this this list, and it says Philip is going to is pledging you know 10 euro to Doctors Without Borders, and you can be like, no, actually, I Joe or w whatever uh, pledge 12 euro to Transparency International. And then if you're the last one on this page by the end of this day, you can, yeah, I'll give you the, the thing with all the, uh, all the famous people on it. And uh, I, all I want, will want from you afterwards is that you show me that you actually donated the money to the cause that you pledged for. So if you, if you want to, if you want to always to like, you know, give money to turtles or whatever, yeah, this, this is your chance to actually also get some some school swag from it. Anyway, yeah, all right.